Hello, my friends. Before the show starts, I wanted to take a moment to ask you, the listener, for a little bit of help this holiday season. My dogs, Henwolf and Chicano, have both developed serious health problems, all at once and all around Christmas, and I could use a little bit of help making sure I can take care of their bills. So if you want to find out how you might be able to help out, just go to weeklyspooky.com and click on Help My Dogs. Thank you again, and now let's get on with the show. Christmas is all about being a good little boy or girl, so Santa Claus will give you something you want. But what happens when Santa Claus has had enough and decides punishment is better than reward? And what happens when your punishment is overdue? What's that? You want to be scared? Come with me. You will experience tales of horror, ghosts, and death. It is not recommended for the weak at heart. Listen as in the dark. It's more fun that way. This is Weekly Spooky. Hello, my friends. It's Wednesday, and you know what that means. It's time for a little spooky in your weekly. And the holiday season is quickly reaching its climax. We have one more little bit of holiday horror to help you get into the spirit. This one's a nasty little piece of work by David O'Hanlon, and I know you're going to enjoy it. But first, I want to take a moment to say thank you so much for joining us this holiday season. I know a lot of you found us in October and are sticking around because you, like me, believe Halloween never truly ends. And if I could ask you for one small holiday gift this season, It would be just that you subscribe on your favorite podcast app and leave us a five-star rating. It costs you nothing and it helps people discover the program. And I also want to give a heartfelt and sincere thank you to the many listeners who have joined our Patreon. Wow, we're at 96 backers. My goal was 100 by the end of the year, but in my opinion, we've already won. Thank you so much for supporting the program for as little as $1 a month. And we have a brand new exclusive Creepypasta Christmas Story available now. If you want to get involved, go to weeklyspooky.com, click on Patreon. For as little as a dollar a month, you get bonus episodes and my undead gratitude. And I also want to say a humongous thank you to the folks who have gone to weeklyspooky.com and clicked on Help My Dogs. My dog Chicano just had his cancerous tumor removed. He's recovering right now, and I'm actually going to go pick him up as soon as I'm done with this show. So thank you so much for that help, especially during the holiday season. And expect an extra special gift waiting for you this Friday and Saturday. But now, let's get to the story after these quick words. Dead Silent Night by David O'Hanlon. Gemma's orgasms reminded Derek of flipper reruns. It was why he'd stopped fucking her in the first place. That and her clothes always left cat hair on his bedspread. Derek hated cats, but no one wants to spend the holidays jingling their own bells. So Derek made sure he was coincidentally strolling through the shopping center where Gemma taught aerobics and sweet-talked his way back into her good graces and her great places. Derek would cut her loose again around mid-January. That would give her enough time to find a date before Valentine's. He imagined it sucked being a single chick on V-Day, and since he was a considerate piece of shit, he'd do her that small favor. Besides, January was a target-rich environment, and he didn't need any other entanglements. Once the Chubbies got on their New Year, New Me bullshit, all Derek had to do was smile. 
That was enough to reassure them that the fad diet and power walking were working. A different pig in the blankets every night of the week. Derek wasn't picky about where his beef bus stopped as long as the passengers disembarked nightly. Besides, it kept him distracted from his other interests, and that kept him out of trouble. So he went back to harpooning the porpoise with purpose. Gemma dug her fingernails into his chest as she slammed herself down on his Yule log. She was getting closer and closer to another orgasm, and the high-pitched squeaking got him further and further away from his own. Derek squeezed his eyes shut tight and tried to focus on the task at hand. Moisture warmly splattered up his chest. He raised a brow without opening his eyes. She was still grinding down on him. She tensed and quivered, but she was quiet. Derek looked up at her, and the glistening sweep of steel protruding from below her chin. Oh no, not again, he thought. The blade tore down, cracking noisily through her sternum. Her bisected heart pumped a money shot over Derek's face and the $600 sheets. The weapon retracted, Gemma's shoulders slumped, and her head lolled forward, as if to inspect the damage. Derek's unblinking gaze focused on the precise wound. The little fuckers were meticulous in everything they did. That's how they made such wonderful toys. Derek heard the tinkering of bells on the tips of the curly-toed shoes from behind Gemma. Her body tipped forward and covered Derek's torso. The little figure walked up her back and stood on her shoulder blades to look down on Derek. It cleaned out a pointy ear with an equally pointy talon on its pinky and smiled with its interlocking chompers. A high-pitched giggle started in the thing's bloated belly. "'You're in a bit of a pickle, Pally,' the elf told him. It scooped Gemma's panties off the headboard with the tip of the sword. "'Hate to tell you, but... That's the last present you'll be unwrapping. You, you, but, no, Derek shook his head and continued muttering. Right, I know, I got the wrong Derek. It's all a big mix-up. Heard it all before, the elf's bulbous eyes rolled. Heard it from you, as a matter of fact. The creature wasn't wrong. The commercialization of Christmas meant all the little crotch goblins got presents no matter how naughty they were, which upset the universal balance of good and evil. You wouldn't think an action figure would be that big of a deal, but that's how it always starts. Give little Timmy a He-Man, and the next thing you know, he's strangling lot lizards on the I-40. And despite what ten-year-old Derek was caught doing with stepmommy's dirty panties, the peephole in his sister's closet, and the incident with Meemaw's Electrolux, he still got a brand spanking new Bravestar Fort Carrium playset for Christmas, and a lump of coal to remind him to change his ways. Of course, he didn't take the hint. So the next year, he got a visit from Peppermint Ray. If Santa could no longer reward good behavior with bribes of handcrafted toys, then the only reasonable course of action was to send his pre-diabetic horde of mercenary fairy folk to murder the shit out of the bad children. Not all the elves were happy about the drastic change in job duties, but luckily for old Saint Nick, Peppermint Ray found taking kiddos apart far easier than putting toys together and infinitely more fun. However, he wasn't the sharpest carving knife in the workshop drawer. When he went to punish little Derek, the boy easily convinced Ray that he had the wrong house. In the 15 years since, three other elves had attempted to correct the mistake. Peppermint Ray wore a sterling candy cane on a chain around his neck in memory of each of them. Derek squirmed beneath Gemma's body. For someone so light and fit, her corpse might as well have been an anvil. Ray gently draped Gemma's panties over Derek's face and raised the curved sword overhead. 
Derek stretched out a hand, groping blindly for help. His fingers curled around the cold, steel loop. Round one of the night had, thankfully, involved some light bondage. He glanced up at Ray through the sheer lace thong and jerked himself hard to the side by the handcuffs hanging from the headboard. The pillow erupted and the elf went face first into the sheetrock through a blizzard of feathers. Derek hung over the side of the bed with Gemma still pinning him in place. He twisted and pulled himself away, keeping his eyes locked on Peppermint Ray. The wicked elf looked up at Derek's mirror ceiling and blew bloody indigo snot from his nostrils before cracking the crooked schnoz back into shape. Derek's sweaty ass squeaked across the wood floor as he pushed himself toward the door. Ray straightened his hat and hopped calmly down from his perch. "'That one's gonna cost you, Pally!' the elf hissed. Derek rolled over and jumped to his feet, bursting forward out of the bedroom with the frantic tickling of Ray's bells giving chase. Derek twisted, taking a precious second to pull the door shut. He cranked back the knob and prayed his size would be enough to hold it. The Tomtian scimitar crashed through the door. Its hollow ground edge stopped shy of giving Derek the circumcision his parents had skipped. A single drop of blood rolled off the tip of the retreating organ. Derek ran down the hallway, shrieking the whole way. Ray pressed his face to the gash in the door. I'm going to turn your guts into garland! Derek suddenly regretted buying the ostentatious five-bedroom home. Sure, there were lots of places to hide, but you can't hide from an elf. Not on Christmas. That meant escape was his only option and the front door felt miles away. The doorknob banged into the bedroom wall, followed by the sound of Ray's pursuit, the pitter-patter of his tiny feet and jingling of his bells that fell into an adorable, terrifying cadence. Slap, tinkle, slap, tinkle, slap, tinkle. Derek's trembling fingers fumbled with the chain lock, finally popped it out of place, and then moved to the deadbolt. Ray raised the curved sword overhead as he charged and let out a piercing battle cry. Derek jerked the door open. The frigid air sent shivers and goosebumps rioting across his body. His jaw hung in a silent scream. His thigh warmed with the sputtering stream of piss cascading down it. The reindeer's obsidian glare met Derek's as it chomped the nub of a severed arm and sucked it into its maw like human spaghetti until only the wiggling fingers stuck out between its lips. Derek whipped his head back and forth from the beast to the psycho elf again and again until the motion jarred loose, a rational thought. He launched a kick straight into Ray's chin and sent him reeling across the floor like a festive 30-pound sack of potatoes. Derek quickly resecured the door and darted into the living room. An elf's senses were highest the closer they got to Christmas, when they needed absolute concentration to fulfill their toy-making duties. A concussion, probably, hopefully, would dull those senses. Derek wriggled between the wall and the back of the couch. It was a stupid place to hide, but he didn't spend enough time at home to warrant excessive furnishings. Peppermint Ray sat up and tested the looseness of his teeth with his forked tongue. An incisor rocked in its socket, drawing a frustrated growl from the tiny terror. He collected himself from the floor. His scimitar shimmered in a sliver of light from the ajar bathroom door. He waved it off and reached for the red-striped handle on his belt. The silver bells on the dagger's sheath chimed as he unsheathed the blade. He held it up and read the inscription Santa had personally etched into the side on Ray's thousandth kill. Jolly is the kill, for goodness sake. Fucking A right it is, fat man, Ray pattered into the living room. Derek tried to focus his hearing on anything other than the pounding of his own heart. The elf would give himself away with the noisy decorations of his uniform, but only if Derek could concentrate. He bit down hard to keep his teeth from chattering. 
A muffled tinkle pricked his ears. Derek turned his head to look up at the top of the couch, fully expecting Ray to be waiting. But he wasn't. Then suddenly, there arose such a clatter, rustling branches, snapping twigs, and shattering ornaments overloaded his senses. The flickering, multicolored lights cast their rhythmic light show on the ceiling from the tree's new location. Ceramic huts and figures smashed on the hearth as Ray godzilla the Dickens out of the model Christmas village on the mantel. Derek clenched his fists until the knuckles popped. Chicks loved that fucking village. Santa's surly assassin was throwing a tantrum and destroying Derek's apartment because he couldn't find his prey. A smile creased Derek's face. He can't find me! That kick to the face turned his brain to eggnog. I'm gonna make it! He can't find me! He thought to himself, raising a quivering hand to cover his mouth and stifle the yip of happiness. The silver bells began to ring as they clacked across the floor like dice and struck the wall trim. They shined brightly at the end of the couch, inches from Derek's face. Ray knew exactly where Derek was hiding. His tiny footsteps were imperceptible with his bells removed. He could come from anywhere. Right on cue, the strand of lights dropped over the back of the sofa and looped over Derek's head. Ray easily jerked Derek up to his knees. The elf tightened the jolly garrote around his dainty fists, digging the twinkling plastic barbs into his victim's throat. It's the twelfth day of Christmas for you, Pally! Ray put a foot on Derek's shoulder for more leverage. Blood spurted around the luminescent fangs. You murdered elves! Tom Tinkle! Sparky Charlie! And... Uh... That fucking nitwit from the repaint department! You were supposed to be his first kill! I wish I could make this last all night! Derek forced himself to stand, and Ray hung from the braided cord, squeezing consciousness from Derek even quicker. The human twisted his body, slamming Ray into the wall. He reached back, knocking the floppy cap from Ray's head, and seized a fistful of stiff white hair. Ray howled in pain. The cord tightened, and Ray pushed off the wall with his feet. They crashed through a French door, landing halfway into the dining room. Derek managed to roll over in time to catch a petite punch right between the eyes. Would you look at that, Derek? Ray jerked a thumb towards the jam. Mistletoe! How about a kiss? Ray's tongue lashed across Derek's terrified face. Then he bit down on the man's cheek. Derek squealed and bashed at Ray's body. The elf shook his head side to side, tearing a hole deep enough to see Derek's molars through. Derek slugged Ray in the gut and flung him off. The would-be killer smacked against the hardwood. Derek staggered upright as Ray rose to his feet with a chuckle. The downed pine separated the two combatants. Ray unsheathed his dagger and tossed it between his hands and began to whistle a melody. "'Can't we make a deal?' Derek whined. "'Stalking around!' The Christmas tree, he sang hoarsely. Have a happy slaughterin'. Everyone dies eventually in ways that are sickening. Ray chuckled at his own artistic genius, shuffling closer to the base of the tree. Derek raised his fists, unsure of exactly how he was going to punch someone three foot shorter than himself. Then he saw another option. He needed a distraction. I'm a pervert, he admitted. I'm a womanizer. I like to fuck. A lot. Maybe if you'd lay off the sweets, you could still see your own ornaments when you look down. Ray glanced at his pot belly and growled. You'd understand then, I bet, Derek continued. What did I do that makes me deserve to die? Like you've never rubbed one out to Mrs. Claus. You keep her out of this! You have, haven't you? Derek forced a laugh. Or is it all that sugar giving you marshmallow dick? Since when is getting laid a capital offense? Ray knelt and tapped the dagger on the floor. Forget what's in your basement, Pally? Derek gulped. 
Santa sees it all, Ray said. He's got a special list for your kind of naughty. Derek dropped to the floor and grabbed the tree's star. Ray brought his hand up as the ornament whizzed through the air and buried deep into his forearm. Mother! Ah! The elf ripped it from the puckered wound and snapped it in half. Derek was gone when he looked up. His nose twitched up and down as he sniffed the air. The human's nakedness made it easier to pick up the scent of fear oozing from his skin. Ray knelt, placing a hand on the floor. An elf's tactile sense had to be hyperactive to make the best toys. He could feel the vibrations of Derek's footsteps in the kitchen. There would be weapons in there. Ray scowled. Fine, Pally. We'll do it your way. Ray clenched the knife between his teeth and slithered across the floor. Derek rocked in place on the kitchen floor. He kept his eyes on the basement door. The fat old bastard couldn't know. Not really. There was no way he could see everything in the world at the same time. Could he? He thought about opening the door, giving up the collection like a peace offering, and turning over a new leaf. It could be his New Year's resolution. Then Peppermint Ray would let him go. He'd have to, because that would make Derek a good boy again. That's what he needed to do. It would work. Derek stopped rocking and rose to the balls of his feet. Eye shine under the dining table made his heart sputter. Ray's forked tongue licked greedily across his lips. Truce! Derek shouted. Ray stabbed his dagger into the tile, sending shards flying as he sprang from the hiding spot. Derek raised his hands. Ray gritted his teeth, pushing his little legs to run faster. Derek struck the lighter and sprayed the oven cleaner through it. Mrs. Claus made fine suits for all the elves. Unfortunately, none of them met the NFPA standard for fire resistance. Ray leapt into the air, becoming a living comet that smashed bodily into his victim's face. The dagger slid across the floor along with four of Derek's teeth. The elf rolled away, slapping at the flames and spewing profanities, while Derek cackled. I can smell your chestnuts roasting, shorty, Derek spat. Derek pulled himself up by the edge of the counter. His split lip poured blood down his naked torso as they curled in a painful smile. Peppermint Ray tumbled across the floor and disappeared into the open pantry with a thud. Precariously stacked items toppled onto him. The entire space flared up into an inferno. How many more elves could Santa lose to kill one person? Besides, Derek wasn't a child anymore. The fat fuck was working outside his jurisdiction. Derek limped out of the kitchen. Extinguishing the fire might save the elf, and he couldn't risk that. Unfortunately, burning the house down was going to be a bigger problem. It might take a day or two, but eventually someone was going to want answers about the contents of the basement. Derek needed to get dressed, grab a few essentials, and find an ATM before his accounts were frozen. He could patch his wounds on the road. Something in the hallway caught his eye. He stood over the Tamtian scimitar and snickered. The sword wasn't much bigger than the butcher's knife he kept for barbecues. He bent over to retrieve the weapon and was surprised by the weight of the minuscule thing. The veins bulged in his forearm as he hefted it up. He'd never realized how strong the elves actually were. Tiny engraved snowflakes decorated the spine of the sword and steamed gently as if they were really cold. The magic of the North Pole seemed limitless. Derek wondered what it would be like to wield such power. He ran his thumb over the edge of the weapon and hissed. The slight contact had opened a deep gash. If he could kill elves so easily, then one old, obese human shouldn't be an issue. He put the damaged digit into his mouth and sucked softly, humming Last Christmas as he contemplated a trip to the North Pole. Killing Santa would solve everything. Oh, oh, holy shit, the raspy voice hissed. You fucked up big time, pally.
a smell something akin to burnt gingerbread cookies wafted around him. Derek turned slowly. Ray looked more like jerky than peppermint. White teeth locked together in a smile surrounded by charred, black flesh speckled with raw muscle showing through. His hair was completely gone. So were his clothes, for the most part. The dagger was still there, and made even shinier in contrast to its crispy owner. "'You know the hardest thing about being an elf, Pally?' Ray asked. Reaching the urinal, Derek raised the sword. "'You're a regular Bob Saget, huh, wise ass?' Ray scratched at his cheek, peeling off a hunk of burnt skin. More pieces dropped away on their own. "'It's Christmas, Derek. That's the bitch of being an elf. I only get one day a year to kill people like you.' "'You won't have to worry about that anymore. This is the last time. You'll—' "'What the fuck?' Bare feet, nine pairs of them, padded into the hallway. Derek looked at the young women, one after the other, and then the children, his children, that they sheltered behind them. They were disheveled, pale, and underfed, but every one of them was smiling. The elf had gotten into the basement. More of the damaged skin fell away, revealing slimy, wrinkled new growth beneath. Ray shook like a dog in the rain and slung the old flesh away. It splattered and plopped around the hall. Bits still clung to him. But he was healing. Santa's power isn't kept at the pole, Pally, Ray said. It's kept in the hearts of the children. They believe, and we keep on keeping on. It's the magic of Christmas. We believe in Santa, one of the children whispered. Another reaffirmed it louder than the others, the ones old enough to speak anyhow. And in Christmas miracles, Marcy Weber stepped beside Ray, and in elves. A tear rolled down her cheek the same way it had when Derek held the chloroform rag over her mouth and nose outside of her sorority six years ago. She was his favorite out of the whole collection. She aimed a finger at Derek. You've been very naughty, she said. Derek let the scimitar fall and was in a dead sprint before it clattered to the floor. His legs pumped furiously. Ray sprang after him. The window at the end of the hallway exploded inward. Derek's feet hit the shards before they could stop. They sliced and stabbed into his soles. The bloody pads made him slide around before he crashed into the wall and fell to all fours. The figure that lumbered through the empty pane stretched and towered over him, The heavy woolen coat hung to the ankles of the snow-caked leather boots. Ice-gripping spikes tore divots from the hardwood floor as the stranger clomped closer to Derek. Derek kept his head down and stared intently at those boots and the ruddy stains of the fur-lining coat. The man stopped in front of Derek and let a heavy, olive-green sack thump beside him. "'Look at me, boy!' Each word was a thunderclap. Raw, supernatural power emanated from every syllable. He stepped on Derek's hand, pressing the spikes through the appendage with ease. I said, look at me! Derek shook his head. The man huffed and knelt. His mittened hand squeezed the sides of Derek's skull and tilted his face up to stare him in the eyes. The bushy, stark white beard dripped with melting snow. His platinum gaze drilled deep into Derek's mind. Bones popped as the fat man increased the pressure of his hold. I know when you've been bad or good, his voice boomed. And I know what you're thinking. I once sent you a lump of coal as a warning to change your ways. You did not take heed. I I learned my lesson, Derek stammered. You can go. I'm good now. They're free. I'm letting them go. I'm changed. Yeah, yeah, like like Scrooge. No, Pally, Ray said. You're just screwed. Ray thrust the knife forward. Derek howled in agony. Right up the chimney. Ray twisted the dagger with a gleeful hoot before cutting through Derek's pelvis. Was that necessary, Ray? Santa asked standing back to his full height. 
Not particularly, the elf admitted with a shrug. But it brightened my night like 25,000 twinkling little bulbs. Santa groaned and looked down at the figure at his feet. Intestines unspooled through the gaping wound as Derek writhed in place. Ray peeled a remaining strip of his old burnt husk away and flicked it onto Derek's back before walking outside. Santa looked at the women and children, then to the spreading flames, and finally back to Derek. It's beginning to look a lot like crispness. Ho, ho, ho! He bellowed with laughter that did, indeed, make his belly jiggle like a bowl full of jelly. He gathered his sack and the survivors and guided them outside. They opened their presents and quickly dressed in the new coats and boots the old man had brought for them. Peppermint Ray had clambered up the harness of his faithful steed and sat on its broad back. Santa made his way to them, giving the reindeer a reassuring pat on the shoulder. He rubbed the massive creature's ear and looked up at Ray. Don't got your finger on the pulse of it no more, do you, boss? Ray asked with a crooked grin. No one wants clothes for Christmas. Besides, the arsenal keep them warm until the cops show up. Santa glanced back at the conflagration. Wasn't exactly subtle? Ain't nothing subtle about peppermint, Ray snorted. You did good tonight. Why don't you take the rest of the evening off? Not a chance, boss. The sleigh bells are ringing and they're playing my favorite tune. He scratched the reindeer's back. Me and old Brutecake got a lot of stops before the sun's up. There is a considerable backlog to clear off the naughty list, I suppose. Santa stepped back and gestured for them to go. I'll see you in the morning, then. Merry Christmas, Ray. Onward, brute cake! Ray clicked his tongue, signaling the reindeer for takeoff. Merry Christmas, boss! The beast charged up the driveway and leapt into the air, blasting off into the night. The twinkling wake of its departure sparkled and crackled among the snowflakes. Santa waved to them as they flew over the inferno. Merry Christmas to all! Ray howled. And to all, a good night. I hope you've enjoyed the brand new Ho Ho Horrors that we've brought you this season. And don't forget, next week we have a New Year's horror story written by our very own producer, Dan Wilder. And it is a fun one. Honestly, this has been a pretty challenging holiday season for me between my dogs both getting sick at the same time and needing a lot of care and needing a new furnace, home ownership, right? But I'm truly so grateful because things are going very well overall. And honestly, I'm just glad I get to hang out with you guys and read scary stories because it's kind of the way I unwind. And from the emails I've gotten from you all, I'm guessing you're in a very similar boat. So thank you so much for listening, and please consider joining our Patreon in the new year so we can reach that 100 goal. I really, really can't tell you how much it means to me. It really helps the show keep on going and going. But this has been an incredible year for the program, and I'm never going to forget it. And speaking of incredible... I want to say an extra special thank you to our Patreon podcast boosters, folks who pay just a little bit more every month to hear their names on the show. And they are Kelly Oram, Julia Kirsch, Christopher Sullivan, Brent McCullough, Gino Lyons, Steve King, Karen Wiemet, Jack Kerr, Jeff and George Hilton, Craig Cohen, and Kevin Fry. Thank you all so much. And if you want to join them, just go to weeklyspooky.com and click on Patreon. Really, this has been a banner year for the show. But next year is going to be even better. We have so many authors with so many scary stories to share with you. But for now, I'm going to get out of here and go wrap some presents, including the one I'm releasing for you all on Friday. So for myself, for my producer, Dan Wilder, my executive producer, Rob Fields, and my composer, Ray Mattis, I will talk at you next week. Thank you for listening. Make sure to find your way back next week. But for now, you are safe. Trust me.